very crummy last season uh, at Cardinal Stadium, and uh, a lot of questions whether or not Bob Petrino will be stay, keeping his job after this year if they struggle again. But uh, you look at the schedule, uh, the Georgia game obviously stands out on the 21st of September. Um, you look further down the list, uh, Virginia, if Virginia continues their climb, that game, even though it's at Notre Dame Stadium, looks a bit scary. Uh, obviously, the matchup against USC, USC got embarrassed the last time they played Notre Dame at Notre Dame Stadium, so you know they want to be bounced back. And then obviously, uh, the October 26th game against Michigan, uh, that's right in the middle of Big Ten play for Michigan, but a big game for Notre Dame. Uh, if they somehow find a way to get to that game undefeated, uh, that could be the game that could determine uh, whether they are a truly a strong candidate uh, and a deserving candidate to be considered for possibly getting to, you know, uh, the college football playoff again. But uh, first things first, they got to find a way to win in Athens. And I still think that's going to be uh, too much to ask, especially with all they lost on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, you still got Romeo Aquara on the defensive line, but you still have questions, you know, and the linebacker position and, and then in the secondary and then uh, the question, I think uh, you talk about the loss of Cole Komet to, to tight end due to injury. Uh, he could be gone for the entire season. That does not look good. I mean, you got a decent uh, guy in block, Brock Wright, but uh, you don't have the blocking uh, force at tight end that you would have if you had Cole Komet. And then you also have, of course, uh, Chase Claypool coming off from in- injury and uh, then Tony Jones at running back. But I think the big thing right now is I think the number two wide receiver, who is it going to be? If it's going to be, you know, Chris Fink or one of the other young guns that they've got from one of these recruited classes, uh, I think a a second and a third wide receiving option uh, needs to emerge, especially if uh, Chase Claypool still needs time to recover from that serious injury he suffered at the end of last year. Rick Rickin, uh, official college football contributor. Rick, you're hearing what he's saying a little bit about Notre Dame, but also more than anything, I want to let's get this uh, uh, season kicked off. Obviously, we've got a lot of teams to talk about. Can't talk about them all, uh, but when you look at the top ten, uh, the top ten rankings, obviously we want to Notre Dame. I don't think it's one of those at the moment, uh, but uh, we'll, we'll get into some of these other Big Ten teams and some of the other teams here in just a moment just to kind of get a, a look at a look and a, a, a feel, if you will. But uh, we got Clemson, Alabama, Georgia. Oklahoma, Ohio State, LSU, Michigan, Florida. I'm sorry, Notre Dame is in the top ten. Notre Dame and Texas in the top ten. What uh, what say you, sir, Rick? Well, unfortunately, this year and just college football has become a little boring because I mean, even though it's my favorite sport, it's the most wonderful time of the year this year. But I, I and Matt, you might be the same way. It, it, you get really tired of talking about Clemson and Alabama, and I think it's just going to be more of the same this year because. Everybody else in the top ten has all these question marks where uh, uh, Clemson and Alabama do not. Everybody's got a new quarterback or a brand-new head coach or lost so much from last year, but Clemson and Alabama, just uh, they, they just refuel every year, and I, I think it's going to be more the same. I think we're going to have a, what, a part five Clemson-Alabama this year. Matthew, top ten, what are your thoughts? I think of the teams that are in that, first five of the coaches uh, preseason rankings right now I think the teams that are the most questionable is Oklahoma and Ohio State Oklahoma I think uh, there's still some holes they need to fill and I think the Big 12 will be much more competitive this year which I think could be a detriment to them and uh, then the question is uh, and obviously with Oklahoma no Kyler Murray so you got to see who's going to be the gunslinger at uh, the quarterback spot and then, uh, obviously, with Ohio State, uh, new quarterback coming in there, transfer from Georgia, and then uh, new philosophy potentially with uh, the new head coach there replacing Urban Byers. So, uh, by no means is a guarantee, but I think you look at uh, the situations, I think it's going to be an SEC domination. SEC domination. Uh, we talked about Alabama. We talked about Georgia, LSU, Florida. Um, you look – Texas A&M could be a factor. Auburn could be a factor. And uh, I think the big question in my mind is, uh, can Kentucky stay competitive after a very strong season last year where they got all the way to the Capital One Bowl in Orlando? Can they back it up with another strong season in a very tough conference? Uh, I think that's the big question mark uh, as far as the SEC. Because uh, beyond that, as much as I hate to say it, Rick, I think uh, the SEC uh, from top to bottom is, again, the strongest conference in college football. And, and Rick, he makes I, I, a very valid there. point. Go ahead, Rick. 
Go ahead, Rick. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to say I'm with you there. The uh, the question mark, you know, of course, Ryan Day at uh, Oklahoma, uh, Ohio State, and then Jalen Hurts probably going to take over the spot in Oklahoma, you know. But I just don't see uh, Oklahoma getting three straight highs and winners at quarterback. Jalen Hurts is dynamic, but we I, I just – I question his downfield passing, you know, some of his passing decisions, even though he's really a, a dynamic quarterback. Uh, then you look at Michigan, is Shea Patterson the right guy? They lost a lot, too. Uh, then you just go on down the list. There's question marks with everybody. Is Texas really back? Uh, we don't know. They looked good last year. They actually dominated Georgia. So Notre Dame is going to look at that blueprint, how they did in that bowl game, and see how they did that against Georgia. But there's just question marks with everybody except for the top two teams. We're talking with Rick Reagan, our official college football contributor this year, and Matthew Embry uh, from the flagship station WSVT up in South Bend, uh, putting on his different hats. He's our official IndyCar contributor, but certainly ha- plays a great role in talking college football with us. Let's, just, let's start with the top 25. Let's go with Boise State, Rick. Uh, you know, things uh, come crashing down early. The Broncos lost to Florida uh, State. We mentioned them earlier uh, in the show with Steve uh, to Jacksonville at the start of the season. Four-year uh, Starting uh, quarterback Brett Ripon is gone, and the new guy will have five starters uh, back on the offensive line. Boise State, what say you? The Broncos. Yeah, that was actually Mark Rippon's like a, a nephew or, or something like that. You know, the Mark Rippon, the uh, great Washington Redskins quarterback from, I don't know what, 15, 20 years ago, something like that. Well, anyway, uh, Boise State has the same problem every year. They get to. Uh, they're a good team. They get invited to play against some of these uh, top-tier schools, and that's where they run into the problem. It's not Boise State uh, of what we thought of them, you know, 10 years ago without Chris Peterson now being at Washington. So that's the problem with Boise State. They're just not on that level yet with the rest of the country, at least the top-tier programs. Matthew, let's talk a little bit about Northwestern. Don't doubt uh, uh, Patrick Fitzgerald. Uh, if the Wildcats can avoid just slow starts this season, Northwestern might be one of the uh, might be ready for another big season. I'm sorry, uh, but uh, Northwestern obviously getting into some Big Ten talk here. I love me some Big Ten, and everybody knows that I love the Big Ten and the IU, and that's the personal side of it. But Northwestern, I think they can have a good season this year, Matthew big game for them, I think, is uh, September 21st against Michigan State. Uh, sure, they have the opener against Stanford uh, in Palo Alto, but I think uh, if they could get through Michigan State and get to that undefeated, I think you certainly have a chance uh, with, you know, Ohio State at home, and then you look that further down, no Michigan have to worry about, and beyond that, the only really dangerous team left, I would say, is either Iowa or maybe a long shot Purdue, but other than that, uh, you look at what they have. They can get through the Ohio State game. Uh, the sky's the limit, I'd say, for the Wildcats, but uh, that's still a big if because, obviously, they start uh, with a tough one in Palo Alto uh, on August the 31st. Rick Rickett rolling right along here in our college football kickoff. We want to just try to get through as much of this as we can because we've got a few more minutes till we jump into our, our official uh, NFL mock draft, the Missouri Tigers. Uh, Rick, Drew Locke won't be back this year, but the Clemson transfer uh, uh, Kelly Bryant won't have to do it all alone at quarterback. Uh, Larry uh, R- R- Roundtree also rushed for 1,216 yards. The schedule also sets them up to be a 7-0 and or an 8-0 and start before going to Georgia on November 9th. Yeah, Missouri is one of those teams that uh, is actually a, a surprise every year, and you just don't think that they're going to really do a whole lot. And then next thing you turn around, they have eight wins. You know, they're one of these uh, teams maybe fit. They're not going to be able to hang with the uh, top-tier teams of the SEC, but I, I think definitely they're a middle-of-the-pack team, uh, definitely a team these top-tier teams don't want to play against, especially at the wrong time of the year where they was happy just to get a win against, you know, one of the uh, – tougher opponents that's going to ruin a season. So Missouri is one of those dangerous teams, I think, especially now with Kelly Bryant. Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, Ma- uh, Matthew, uh, going up in your neck of the woods there in Michigan State, uh, this team might be in the middle between those double-digit uh, c- compilers and just to get to, get by bowl teams. But Michigan State Spartans, I, 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 I would put – I would lean more towards – and I know about, a lot of people are going to disagree with me on this, but that's the Michigan uh, team I would be paying attention to. I, I still don't have a lot of faith in Jim Harbaugh in, in, in Michigan, uh, but that's just me. I guess haters will be haters. Uh, Matthew, uh, Michigan State, what are your outlook this year? 
I agree with you on that. I think Michigan State is the better of the two. I think they're the ones that are going to be huddling that uh, Paul Bunyan trophy after their matchup with Michigan. Uh, I think there's, again, not any big-time flashy players, but there's a bunch of solid players on Michigan State squad, and that's something that Michigan doesn't have, in my opinion. I mean, Michigan, I think, will have enough to beat teams like Notre Dame, et cetera, but I think in the big games, when you come down to it, you know, the Ohio States, uh, et cetera, I just don't think they're going to have enough to get over the humps of those games and be able to be in the college football playoffs, if not uh, that Big Ten championship game. Rick, uh, let's talk a little bit about Virginia Tech. At the very least, the Hokies uh, should avoid embarrassing losses like uh, Old Dominion and the blowout defeats. Uh, Quarterback Ryan Willis has a strong group of targets to work with this year. What are your thoughts with Virginia Tech Hokies? Yeah, I still see them uh, as a – you're right, they shouldn't lose the Old Dominion, and that was a shocker last year, right? But uh, yeah. I, I still uh, see them as a team, you know, a bit of a, a rebuilding phase. Uh, uh, Fuentes, their head coach, is a, is a really good head coach. Uh, they got embarrassed by Notre Dame last year. We kind of unplugged the amplifier to Metallica on them last year. So they're going to come into Notre Dame Stadium this year. Uh, I don't know if it's be such an embarrassing loss this year to Notre Dame, but they won't get past the Irish, I don't think. And uh, they should be an all in all a little better team this year, but another middle of the pack ACC team. Finally, we don't have time to get through all of these uh, top 25 teams, but we'll uh, end it up before we go into the uh, the mock draft and the NFL talk and all of the fun stuff because it is football, and we got fantasy football drafts going on this weekend. Two of the balanced drafts happen this weekend, Sunday and Monday, if you're in the Keeper League on Monday, and then Sunday is our normal uh, balanced uh, fantasy team that we do every year. But let's go with you, Matthew. What are your thoughts about the the Cornhuskers of Nebraska? Nebraska, I think right now is, uh, you know, still a team that just can't quite break through the ceiling. I think once they do that, I think they could be a contender in the Big Ten. They just don't quite be able to get there. I mean, it's like those things. I mean, the good story that just can't quite get there. And uh, I think right now the other story in my mind is right now who's going to be the mid-major. I think there's still serious question marks whether UCF can hold their position uh, with the transfer, Brandon Wimbush now at the helm. And uh, you look at the other, I think, mid-majors that could surprise. I think the question is, uh, is Army for real? Can they back up the big year they had last year? Uh, They almost had the win against Oklahoma and then – Of course, uh, don't forget, they get a chance uh, to challenge Michigan at uh, the Big House coming up on September 7th. So if you're looking for potential upsets and uh, why I don't like Michigan's chances, uh, that game, they can struggle to get something they can have real problems. Absolutely, and real quickly, and we're getting ready to go into our mock draft. Matthew, I appreciate you joining us, but joining us also now is Adam Jevedin, Super Brown fan. Adam, uh, the Browns uh, take on the Colts tonight, but we are finishing up our college football segment, so let's get your thoughts on the Ohio State suckers. I mean, Husky, I mean, yeah, uh, Buckers. I mean, Buckeyes, Suckeyes. I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Uh, the Ohio State Buckeyes. Had to give you a little, a little uh, rip in there. Uh, because, you know, I'm an IU guy in Big Ten, and you're an Ohio State guy, and haters will be haters. Go ahead, Adam. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. How are you, Tom? We're good. What are your thoughts on the Ohio State Buckeyes? Blah, 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 blah. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. I, I, I Honestly, this is the first time in a long time. I don't really know what to expect. Uh, we, you know, we have a first-year head coach, Ryan Day, who had a three-game kind of tryout, so to speak, last year. Um while Urban Meyer was serving suspension. We have an unknown at quarterback in Justin Fields. Here's what I do know. Ryan Day is an incredibly good quarterbacks coach. We have an entirely new defensive staff, so they can't be a whole lot worse than they were last year, but they're probably in the Big Ten and maybe even nationally the biggest unknown in in the college football landscape. I mean, no one really has a clue what to expect. Is the offense that we saw last year from Dwayne Haskins – the offense that they're going to have this year. How good is Justin Fields? He's one of the highest rated uh, high school quarterback recruits ever, was right behind him and Trevor Lawrence, who won the national title last year, is uh, coming out of high school. So, like, no one has a clue what to expect. This team could go 9-3. and three. This team could run the table. I have no idea. All I do know 
is that the Ohio State University has permanent residence in Jim Harbaugh's head, and so that no matter what happens when we play that team up north, we will beat <laughs> them into oblivion because that's what we 